Namaskar everybody, my name is Ashish and you're watching the series of Bipin Chandra's India Struggle for Independence. And we are into a very exciting chapter. The chapter which tells you how the Congress was split open by the Britishers and what led India towards the ways of revolutionary activism. For the first time, we were seeing heroic acts done by young freedom movement specialists and nationalists from Bengal. So these two important facets of the Indian nationalism we shall hear and we shall read diligently. Now let us begin with the split in the Congress. Now split, as everybody knows and most of the students, even if you are not preparing for UPSC, you would know that moderates and extremists were two opposing pillars of Congress. And it was the difference between them that led to the split. But my dear students, the story is not that simple. Let us see how moderates and extremists were different. Now, the very first thing that moderates failed to make Swadeshi a pan-India movement. Actually, moderates which were led by Dada Bhai Naroji, as you can see on the screens, or Gopal Krishna Gokhale here, they wanted to make Swadeshi only as an agenda of Bengal. We all know in the preceding chapter of the Swadeshi movement that the movement itself started because of partition of Bengal, right? So they didn't want the Swadeshi agenda to go beyond the borders of Bengal. That was the first difference. The second difference that they had, in 1906, there was a Congress session. And in the Congress session, uh, which was happening in Calcutta itself, Dada Bhai Naroji was the president out there and he uh, did not take this challenge ahead. In fact, he passed some resolutions which was like a compromise resolution. And uh, because of that, the moderates were known, you know, India over, uh, that they just, uh, if I would say, function in prayers and petitions. For them, prayers, petitions and constitutional protests are the only way through which they want to fight Britishers. Everybody thought that moderates were very much uh, worried of the mass action. They didn't want public participation as such. And they did not want mass also to participate in that. Finally, they believed in the British benevolence. They genuinely thought that Britishers would give them some or the other constitutional liberties if they did not make life tough for them. And I'm saying for British, moderates believe that fine, uh, we shall take the issue of partition, but we will take it in a simple way. We will take it in a natural course. Uh, we will uh, write petitions to the governors. We will give signed petitions to the governors. We will not follow mass action, mass agitation, boycott, etc., which we saw in Swadeshi movement. That is why we say, that Swadeshi movement was surprisingly away from the moderate section of the Indian National Congress. You will not hear the name of moderate leaders like Dada Bhai Naroji or Gopal Krishna Gokhale participating actively into the Swadeshi movement. They desired the right to gradual self-rule. They didn't want self-rule suddenly. They didn't want the so-called word Swaraj. Suddenly, they wanted a gradual development. They thought that Okay, today if we ask for uh, the right to discuss, tomorrow they will give us the right to vote. A day after tomorrow, they will give us the dominion right. And then, you know, after years, they will give us uh, the right to self-rule. So they wanted a progression, but a gradual progression. They didn't want Britishers to go right and about at that point of time. That was the difference between extremists and moderates. Now, with all of this, uh, of course, uh, the differentiation between them was going to deepen and deepen. If I would say the valley between them was going to deepen and deepen, right? So, the British attitude towards moderate is very important to note. Were the Britishers favoring the moderate? This is the question that you might have in your mind. That uh, if moderates were so kind to the Britishers, were Britishers also kind to the moderates? Here, I have uh, shown you the picture of Lord Dufferin. Uh, but there is a statement of uh, Curzon, Lord Curzon, on Gokhale. And look at this statement, and we will see the statement again, but I just want you to look at this statement, and this will tell you what the attitude of Britishers were there towards the moderates as well. 
Gokhale either does not see where he is going or if he does see it, then he is dishonest in his pretensions. You cannot awaken and appeal to the spirit of nationality in India and at the same time profess loyal acceptance of the British rule. So, my dear students, if you think that moderates were uh, good, favorite child of uh, Britishers, you are wrong. Britishers also did not like moderates. They followed a carrot and stick policy with them, means with moderates. For example, if you behave well, you will be given carrot. But if you disobey, if you do not behave well, immediately a stick will come and follow. So, uh, this was the way even moderates were treated. Congress was described as a factory of sedition or seditious group of Brahmins or disloyal Babus by the British officials and nonetheless by Lord Dufferin here. Lord Dufferin was the Viceroy of India when Indian National Congress just was beginning to start its journey during 1885 onwards. And look at what he used to say. Uh, Lord Dufferin used to say that, look, uh, Indian National Congress is a microscopic minority. It represents a microscopic minority. Indian National Congress does not represent the whole of India. The Lord Dufferin himself said, that I will not like to give this party any eminence. I would not like to give this party any credit for representing people of India because this party does not represent the people of India. So, uh, in the process of writing answers, if you think that moderates and extremists were differing with each other, that is fine. They were differing with each other. But don't consider that moderates were a uh, favoured uh, group by Britishers. They were also uh, in a way prosecuted by Britain. So, uh, I have shown you with this statement here. Let us go to the shift in policy that Britishers had towards uh, Indian National Congress after 1905. So, after 1905, there was something which was happening and you know, 1905 is the year of partition. Partition of Bengal was happening in 1905. Uh, so, that is fine. But here, I have a picture of somebody else someone else who was officiating. Okay. Uh, that means Lord Morley was becoming the Secretary of State and uh, Lord Minto was becoming the Viceroy. And these people had shifted the policy towards Indian National Congress. Now, post-British or post-Swadeshi movement of 1905 till 1907, Britishers decided that they need to <coughs> placate the Congress. They need to pacify the Congress. They need to bring some part of the Congress with themselves. And that is where moderate stands. They said that, you know, instead of sneering at them, instead of rejecting them, like how Lord Dufferin used to reject them, the policy was now to seek their support, to rally their support. And what they used to do? Morley, John Morley, whose, uh, whose photo I have shown you here, he was becoming the new Secretary of State and he said that now is a time for coalition politics. We will offer them some remedy. We will offer them some sort of liberty. So, he started promising the reforms of 1906. So, for example, moderates were placated through some concessions and extremists at the same time were, you know, prosecuted by the government. So, one section of the Congress was becoming close to the Britishers and the other section of Congress was at the same time simultaneously being attacked by Britishers. Moderates fell into this trap and the trap was constitutional reforms. Lord Morley promised that there will be constitutional reforms which will be coming up and we will see those reforms, the so-called reforms of 1909. But he promised that from 1906 onward, we are going to discuss new constitution of India and if you want a good liberal constitution of India, you better behave. And moderates were trying to behave. They were not trying to, you know, Placate uh, the Britishers. Now, here is the chance which I tell you that you also need to shift your strategy. See, with every challenge, your shifting strategy also comes into picture. So, let's suppose your challenge is 2025 UPSC Civil Services Examinations. Now, when you are preparing for that longer challenge, you need to shift your strategy. That is why we have bought this product for you. Prelims to interview batch, P2I batch allows you 
to attend the online classes of prelims with us. That is one way. Everybody does that. Fine. So what new is there in this uh, group or in this batch? The new thing is that along with prelims preparation, let's suppose you clear prelims and then you sit for mains. What about then? For mains, we will train you again in an offline mode in our batches in our campuses. So our campuses in Delhi and Gurgaon, this is where we will train you for the upcoming mains examination when you crack prelims. So that four months of mains examination residential program it will be and the earlier prelims program. This is once in for all opportunity, right? Don't lose this opportunity. In fact, the prizes will be less than half provided you use the code. Use the faculty code ASHLIVE wherever, whenever you take any of the study IQ courses. Don't forget to use the ASHLIVE code. If you don't use it, you will not get the heavy discount. The heaviest discount that you will get is through the faculty codes. Other codes, you will not get that much discount. So please use this code ASHLIVE. Get the heaviest discounts and at the same point of time, make your preparation affordable. But you know what? Affordability comes with quality. For example, we will never compromise on the quality that we deliver to our students, right? And this is what, when you join us in our classrooms, you will see a different set of quality, right? So don't wait for your strategy to come alive. Take this opportunity, shape your strategy as of now for 2025 long-term preparations as the Britishers were shifting their strategies then and there, right? So also, use this opportunity. Remember, the batches are starting from 16th of September. Don't miss out on this. Moving forward, I will speak about it later on. How the split occurred? This is a big question that if Britishers were desiring split, what led Congress to go towards that split? I always use photographs to give you a photographic memory, to give you a photogenic memory. Here is the person who was the president of Indian National Congress during the time of split and we shall learn his name just in few moments from now. What happened? A great deal of problems started happening between extremists and moderates during 1905 to 1907. They were bickering, they were fighting with each other on number of issues. What was those? Number one, Swadeshi movement. Extremists wanted to make it a pan-India movement, an all-India movement, but moderates didn't want to make it. This we have already seen. The second, was the 1906 Calcutta session under Dada Bhai Naroji. Dada Bhai Naroji was a compromise candidate. To let you all of you know, Dada Bhai Naroji was not a... He cannot be, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, categorized into extremist or moderates also. Because even extremists valued him and even moderates valued him. He never said that I belong to one particular section of the Congress. So he was like a compromise candidate, but yes, he favored moderates and he passed some compromise resolutions to placate and to, you know, make the extremist stay in the Congress and said, okay, we are also taking your agenda. So what were those four famous agendas? It was nothing but Swadeshi, that we will honor the Swadeshi movement as it is going on. We will honor the boycott movement as it is going on. We will start with the national education program that was a very important part of Swadeshi movement and the self-government issues, the issue of Swaraj. But what is missing from the famous four resolutions which have been passed in 1906 Calcutta session is the decision to make Swadeshi movement an All India movement. That Dada Bhai Naroji did not agree to. And this is what extremists also wanted. Now, the other thing which happened in 1907, okay, 1906 went away. 1907 December session again Congress was meeting and again both the sides of the Congress extremist and Swadeshi wanted to fight on the same issue and they decided that we will keep the session of Congress in Surat. You know there is a particular reason why session of Indian National Congress in 1907 was kept at Surat and no other place. Congress had a peculiar if I would say um, rule. What was that peculiar rule? That let's suppose I belong to Bombay province and if Congress resolution is happening at my province, that is Bombay province, then 
I will not be allowed to stand up in the elections because I will be a local candidate and a local candidate will always have an edge. So, to in a way to curtail the local candidates to have an edge, Congress decided that local candidates will not stand up for president election. Surat at that point of time was a part of Bombay presidency. And who was the local leader at Bombay presidency? It was Bal Gangadhar Tilak. So basically, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, in order to prevent him from becoming president, Surat session was held in 1907. So in 1907, things come to a head. Surat was chosen as a venue to exclude Tilak from becoming president. I hope now you realize it. Why? So what happened? Rash Bihari Ghosh, the person whom you are seeing on the screen, the picture that you are seeing on the screen, was chosen to become the party president and he was supported by moderates. Extremists were no less determined to derail it. In fact, Aurobindo led the charge and Tilak led the charge against Rash Bihari Ghosh. There was a lot of commotion happening and when the decision came to pass the agendas, to pass these four resolutions as you are seeing on the screens and to make sure that Swadeshi will become a pan-India movement when it was not allowed to become a pan-India movement, everything started flying on the stage. Literally, people were throwing chairs, people were throwing shoes and it went and hit Surendranath Banerjee who was sitting on the stage. This is what Bipin Chandra says us in this chapter. You can imagine, brothers were fighting brothers. Extremists and moderates, whatever you call them, they were working for one nation. They were working for one party. There was no need for them to have such a kind of enmity. And it provided a golden opportunity to the Britishers. Now, I want to tell you the gravity of the situation. It's always good to hear the statements which was coming from such situations. I'm taking a statement of A.H. Wadia, which has been written in this book. And A.H. Wadia was representing Firosha Mehta, who was a staunch moderate leader, the tallest moderate leader of the Indian National Congress. And look at what A.H. Wadia is saying about extremists. And this is a very disturbing statement. He says that the union of these men with the Congress, these men means the union of extremists. Here, these men means extremists. So he's saying that the union of these men with Congress is the union of a diseased limb to a healthy body. He's saying that extremist in the Congress is like a diseased limb in the, in the body. It's like a diseased part of the body. And the only remedy is surgical severance if you do not have to die by blood poisoning. So he's saying that you have to surgically remove, cut off the extremist from the body, then only you will be able to be alive. Otherwise, you will die from blood poisoning. This was if I would say the hateful statement that the representative of Firosha Mehta was making against extremists, these tell you the sworn enmity between these two factions. You can use these in answers. But remember that we are using such statements from the book itself in order to highlight the enmity between extremists and Congress during 1907. Nevertheless, moving forward, aftermath of the split. What happens after the split? If you think that extremists were happy with the split, uh, you're mistaken. So what happens is that uh, according to Aurobindo Ghosh, the person who was very much hurt by split was Bal Gangadhar Tilak. Tilak described it as a disaster. Tilak, whose picture you are seeing it here with Lala Lajpatra and Bipin Chandra Paul, uh, he, dis he, he termed the split between Indian National Congress as a disaster, said that this is a catastrophe, this should not have happened. And then he sent letters of regret, he sent many letters to moderate leaders and he sent many letters to Rash Bihari Ghosh, accepting him his president and accepting to work under him, as well as to other Congress leaders, but it, actually it was Firosha Mehta who blocked his entry into Congress. Hirosha Mehta didn't want Tilak to ever come back to Congress. Not only that, after that, just, you know, after this, uh, you have uh, a very interesting, if I would say, phenomena in which uh, every 
extremist leaders were sent away from India. So, for example, just after the split, just after the Suraj session of December 1907, Tilak was charged with a sedition. He was charged with uh, his writings on uh, newspapers like Kesari and Maratha, uh, as well as uh, uh, in uh, other newspapers. And he was charged for six years rigorous imprisonment. First, he was jailed in India. And then he was jailed in Burma, sent to Mandalay for six years. Although the sentence was then reduced, but he was sent for six years as a charge. Aurobindo Ghosh, who was an active partitioner, leading partitioner in the split, he was also charged in a revolutionary conspiracy. The court trial went with him. He was declared innocent, but after the court trial, he decided never to participate in the politics and decided to retire in Pondicherry. Pondicherry or Puducherry, as you know now, has a big, big presence of Aurobindo, you have Aurobindo ashram there. So, Aurobindo Ghosh turned to saintly life. Look at what happened to Lala Lajpat Rai, who is also seen in the picture here. Lala Lajpat Rai left for Britain and then subsequently for United States of America from 1908 onwards. He will be seen in India again only during the time of the agitations of Simon Commission and not before that. So, ideally speaking, the moderates were able to diminish and literally rub all the extremist leaders from India away with the help of Britishers, of course. So, Britishers were hands in gloves and Britishers were using this opportunity. And the next thing they did was to throw open to India the divisive Morley Minto Act. The Act of 1909 or the Government of India Act 1909, as you know, Morley Minto Reforms or Morley Minto Act or Government of India Act 1909 was a clever way to divide Indian politics on communal lines. It increased the seats, the legislative seats of Legislative Assembly. Look at the way it has increased the seats. There were total 69 seats which were uh, increased. Out of this 69, uh, 9 were ex officio members. So, 9 were ex officio members means they had governor general, they had uh, extraordinary members, 7 extraordinary members, 1 ordinary member, so and so forth, right? Uh, but the 60, out of 60 extra members who were added in the legislative capacity, 37 were considered to be officials, they were official in nature, and 32 were non officials. It was here that Indians were supposed to be elected. But look at their clever tactics. Out of the 37 ex, uh, as I told you, uh, 37 official members, 28 were to be nominated by Governor General himself. So that gave him a majority. And out of these 32 non officials, 5 were also to be nominated by Governor General. So ideally speaking, you were just having 28 members who will be elected. So out of this also, 5 members to be nominated. So you are left with what? Just 28 members, right? So these 28 members, uh, or 27 members rather, uh, were just to be elected. And it was out of these 27 members that separate electorate were also introduced. So separate electorate for Muslim constituency and landholders constituency were introduced for the first time. See, uh, separate electorate is a process whereby you become the candidate, you become the Muslim candidate, but the voters are also supposed to be Muslims. Uh, other voters are not supposed to vote. So, in a separate electorate, not only the candidate is reserved, but also the voters are reserved. The voters are also of the same community as the candidate is. This is what not happens in reservation. Let's suppose a seat is reserved in Indian Parliament uh, for uh, scheduled tribes and scheduled castes. Now, every other community member can vote for scheduled tribes and scheduled castes. Only the candidates are reserved. But here, even the voters were reserved. That was also not the contention. But the contention was, why on the lines of religion, for the first time, 
religious separate electorates were introduced. That was the bitter, bitter truth that we were facing when India was split, when India's political party was split and a communal politics agenda was being put on by the Britishers. Legislative capacity of provinces were also increased by the way. So for example, Madras, Bombay and uh, United Province, uh, they had 47 each members which were increased. Bengal was 52, Punjab was 25 around and Eastern Bengal Province was 41. Later on, Eastern Bengal Province was dissolved. Uh, right to discussion was there, right to ask supplementary questions were there. But to move resolutions, they were given some powers. Uh, to scrutinize the budget, they were given some powers. They were not given power to vote fully, but they were just given power to vote on some sections of the budget. So you are not able to fully vote the budget or not vote the budget, but you can vote some sections of the budget. So that is what it was. So Morley Minto reforms, if I would say, was just an attempt to introduce communal politics in India. And that too, at that point of time, when Indian nationalism was at its weakest point. So understand this parallel process going on. Split happened in 1907. Just within two years, you had a divisive act of modeling into reforms. Learn the strategies of the Britishers. That is how they divided country. Now, this led to a parallel upcoming movement of revolutionary activism. Act of individual heroism. Look at this statement from this newspaper, Yugantar. Yugantar was a very important newspaper, in fact, an underground movement in Bengali Swadeshi movement time period. This newspaper says that if 30 crore people, at that point of time, the population of India was around 30 crores. So, this newspaper said that if 30 crore people inhabiting in India will raise their 60 crore hands, 30 crore people raising their two hands is equal to 60 crores. So, if the six, uh, uh, 60 crore hands to stop this curse of operation, force must be stopped by force. So, they were saying that if Britishers are ruling us by force, we need to remove their rule by force itself. There is no other way. This young men from Bengal were choosing the acts of individual heroic activism. That was revolutionary activism that happened. For example, why it was happening? The number one reason was people were disillusioned from Congress. They were like extremists and moderates. They are all fighting with each other. They can't understand the, 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 the shrewdness, the cleverness of Britishers and they are fighting with each other. What is the use of such a nationalistic political party? We would rather do our own job and do not depend upon politicians to do our job. So they stopped it. Second, they believed in the idea that force must be stopped by force. If Britishers are ruling us with force, if Britishers are ruling us with being violent, we should also have violent attitude towards the Britishers. At this point of time, Gandhiji was not there in India. This is a very important time period. Next, it gave examples of international heroic acts. So, for example, there was a Russo-Japanese war that happened in 1905. Russia and Japan were fighting in 1905. Russia was a monarchy state at that point of time and yet Japan defeated Russia. So, everybody was like, look, such a big country is being defeated by such a small country called Japan. Why can't we defeat Britishers? India is a bigger country than Great Britain. We have a bigger population. Why can't we define and why can't we defeat them? Second. They also took inspirations from foreign nationalists. So, for example, Italian Revolution, which happened in 1860s, 1861 to be precise, they had some revolutionary leaders like Mazzini. Now, uh, biographies of Mazzini were written, biographies of uh, their heroic acts were being written by Tilak and being circulated in the newspaper. So, that gave them inspiration. Irish nationalism gave them inspiration because Irish nationalism was opposing the British nationalism, right? So, that gave them inspiration. So, they were like, look, these are the inspiring figures from the foreign history, from the world history and why should not we take an example and remove colonial rulers from here. Lastly, they were also very much concerned about exit of extremists from the ground. 
extremist leaders like Tilak was not there in India. Lala Lajpat Rai was not there in India. Aurobindo Ghosh had retired from politics. Bipin Chandra Paul had retired from politics. They were concerned about these leaders. And when they thought that their leaders are not there, that they should serve the nation through propaganda by deeds. They should not serve the nation by just following the dictums of moderates by just giving petitions and prayers and constitutional methods, they should give some propaganda and show to the people that, look, we are doers. We will not just stand with petitions. We will do something and show it to the world. And what they did. Look at this chart. This is the name of the revolutionaries and the deeds and the acts that they did. Starting with Barindra Kumar Ghosh and Bupendra Nath Datta who were leading the Anushilan Samiti as well as Yugantar or Jugantar group that started the underground movement in Calcutta. So they became very important. They actually started the underground movement in Calcutta. Pramatnath Mitra then led Anushilan Samiti. Again, Anushilan Samiti was also uh, working for <coughs> the Swadeshi movement uh, when arbitration courts were to be held. But when they were banned, then they started working in underground capacity. Raj Bihari Bose, a very known example, uh, and he planned the assassination of uh, Lord Harding. He was the viceroy when uh, capital was being shifted. So I'm talking about 1911 and 12. Uh, Lord Harding was on an elephant in Chandni Chowk area, and that is where Raj Bihari Bose and Sachin Sanyal uh, managed to throw a bomb on uh, Harding. Uh, Harding uh, remained alive after the attack. His accomplice was injured in the attack. But this was considered as one act of very huge heroic individual act that he did. And later on, Raj Bihari Bose, you will also read his name in Ghadar movement. And then you will also read his name in Indian National Army's movement way back in 1942. Prafulla Chaki and Khudiram Bose. Khudiram Bose, I would like to say, the youngest person to be hanged. A very young chap. But he was also involved in bombing uh, the district magistrate of uh, Muzaffarpur, uh, Kingsford. Uh, although the district magistrate escaped unhurt, but these two people were tried and hanged. Uh, Vasudev Balwant Fadke, he was leading the Ramosi's peasant rebellion in Maharashtra. Or Chapekar brothers, Vishnu Chapekar, Damodar Chapekar, they assassinated the plague commissioner of Pune, Mr. Rand. Why? Because the plague commissioner was not doing his duty for providing for relief measures to the residents of Pune. Or for that matter, uh, no discussion on revolutionary activism can be over without discussing Vinayak Damodar Savarkar. Now, Savarkar started with his Mitra Mela first and later on changed the name of Mitra Mela to Abhinav Bharat. And uh, this organization was involved in revolutionary activities. In fact, V.D. Savarkar was called to have great influence over uh, Madanlal Dhingra. And Madanlal Dhingra happened to assassinate Lieutenant Curzon Wiley uh, in London. So, Madanlal Dhingra was seen to be a very known accomplice of V.D. Savarkar. In fact, V.D. Savarkar had to escape uh, London because of the charges that he helped Madanlal Dhingra assassinate Mr. Curzon Wiley. And finally, Shamji Krishna Verma, who was having India Home, India Society in London. He was having a place for Indians in London where everybody went and met together. In fact, it is said that Gandhiji also stayed in India House in London. And here are the pictures of those revolutionaries, so starting with V.D. Savarkar, followed by Shamji Krishna Verma. Uh, in fact, Shamji Krishna Verma gave the keys of India House to V.D. Savarkar after he also exited from there. And you have uh, Rash Bihari Bose, a very known, he, he is a person who, who was never caught by British, but a very inspiring person out there. And very young nationalist Kudiram Bose. Uh, being hanged uh, on the account of uh, trying to assassinate the district magistrate of Muzaffarpur, Kingsford. These were some of the most important revolutionary activism which was happening during the time of 1905 to 1907, 08, 09. I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, don't forget 
to subscribe to our products don't forget to take part in the classes the classes are much more enticing the classes are much more interactive here i interact with you on youtube i would encourage your questions out there if you have any i would also tell you to join my telegram channel at the end of this slide but before that don't forget to use the code ash live in every of your courses on study iq in any of the courses that you want to use whether you want to take optional because we have numbers of optional that you can prepare us with us if for example even if you want mathematics optional it is out there for you right so you can co use the code ash life and prepare for it but you know what history is a subject which is to be read as a story and remembered as a story so i'll help you take that challenge on you don't need to mug up any facts but you need to situate every event one after the other once you'd like to do that story wise no question no event will be tough for you everything will be a cakewalk so take a part in our courses join our courses it is there in english purely english english as well as hindi mediums so if you want a mix of both that is also fine with us we have separate batches for you if you just want english that is also fine with us we know that our uh, dear students from south or from northeast uh, or even from hearts of india uh, they want to uh, give exam in english so they want a pure english batches we are ready with that if you are comfortable with hindi and english as well as most of the students are hum uske liye bhi taiyar hai so you have no other excuse for not joining it it's the most uh useful wonderful and a lucrative batch that will take you from that see the idea is to take you from prelims till interview to see your name in the final list why don't you start with that preparation today so if you are seeing that i know that you are a diligent student use this opportunity to take admission into our courses use the code ash life and see your dreams come true you can connect with me on the telegram ask me any question that you need to relating to this uh, chapters as well as if you want to download the ppts of bipin chandra series you can connect with me on the telegram i have uploaded it out there and you can download it as well thank you for watching stay tuned for the next upcoming episode thank you